So the Sage story, um, over three million customers, and who are these customers? They're, they're the engine room of all the economies around the world. They're the entrepreneurs, the small and medium businesses, the heroes of the economy. They're out there creating three quarters of all the new jobs, whether it's in France, whether it's in Canada, around the world. And uh, obviously, because they're the heroes of the economy, creating all the prosperity, we think they deserve awesome technology. And what we've done is build through the Sage Business Cloud the most complete uh, cloud portfolio of solutions to allow them to run their business, accounting, payroll, payments, banking, and their people management fully integrated in the cloud to allow them to have the time to do what they love, which is grow their businesses and be successful for their countries. So with FY17, it marks the closure of the transformation phase. And when we got together, what, three years ago, Steve, uh, we set a challenge for ourselves that I think a lot of people would have viewed as extremely tough. Uh, most companies, when they move from the model towards a subscription, high recurring revenue model, um, actually incur a decline in revenues and a decline in profitability. And we set ourselves a high bar at that time, three years ago, of guidance of 6% organic growth and 27% operating margins for the company, as well as under the covers, moving the customers to the subscription model and into the cloud. So I'm pleased to sit here today and say for those three years, we've exceeded guidance. Um, and in FY17, we actually delivered organic growth of 6.6%, and again, um, organic operating margins of 28%. So good progress, a good scorecard, but with the closure of the transformation, I think it really gives us a strong platform to move forward. And then what about uh, some of the financial highlights back in FY17, Steve? Yeah, as you say, Stephen, I mean, I think the fact that over that three years, we were able to achieve that 6% um, organic revenue growth every year and the 27% operating margin, but a lot's been happening sort of below that. So one of the key statistics we look at is the level of recurring revenue. So of the, of the total revenue that Sage delivers, uh, has delivered in FY17, 78% of that is recurring. So that's a mixture of maintenance and support contracts and subscription. That's been driven um, partly by um, uh, the migration um, of our existing customers to the business cloud, cloud-enabled uh, versions of their existing products, so the Sage 50 family, the Sage 200 family. And we've seen a 140% increase in revenue, and we now have over 170,000 customers who've taken that journey. Um, the other key thing, I think, is that we've shifted a lot in terms of our cost base. So, you know, the cost of the back office as a percentage of revenue was nearly 20%. And so over the last three years, we've taken um, you know, something that, that cost of nearly 20%, and in FY17, that's down to 13.7%. So two years running, we've achieved over 50 million of annualized savings, so over 100 million over a two-year period. And that's been a really important ingredient in terms of us being able to use that money to then reinvest back into the go-to-market functions and improving the, the customer journey. So I think customers can see we're investing in areas that, that benefit them. And I think it's, um, it's quite illuminating now. We've got over, what, 3 million businesses across the world using Sage uh, and now moving to the Sage Business Cloud and being the market leader in countries like Canada, obviously UK, Ireland, France, Spain, Africa, and the market leader now in the US in terms of scale-up and enterprise really gives us a good and strong footprint uh, to grow further and expand our, our reach. And you know, this year we we, we did three uh, significant acquisitions at a total uh, cost of, a, of of around a billion dollars. But despite that, we still have a return on our capital employed in FY17 of 27 percent. Now, if you think, you know, our cost of capital is is less than 10 percent. So. It's very important that we remain very disciplined of making sure that when we spend our money, whether it be giving that money back to shareholders um, through a dividend or whether it be spending that money on acquisitions to further um, accelerate our growth, that we're, that we're very vigilant about making sure that we get those returns. But the fact that we have you know, five of our nine regions you know, growing at, at double digits shows that we're starting to get that return on investment in a number of places um, and, and a number of the campaigns are really now starting to land. I'm really excited about the three acquisitions we did in FY17. Uh, one of the highlights 
with Sage Intact, which is in something called the Gartner Magic Quadrant. Gartner is a very esteemed market analyst. And the top quadrant uh, element says that these are the most innovative companies in the world. So obviously we bought some amazing innovation. Uh, what, what were the other highlights from the three acquisitions that we did in FY17, Steve? Yeah, and I think, I think it's interesting. The three acquisitions in many ways are different, but they, they also have a number of similarities. They're different in that, as you say, Sage Intact is you know, a world-leading um, cloud financial solution. Um, Sage People, formerly Fair Sale, is a, a world-leading human capital management suite of solutions, and um, Sage Compass is, is um, you know, analytics driven by artificial intelligence and machine learning. So, sort of different parts of the market, but all coming together under the Sage Business Cloud to give our customers, you know, a wider suite of solutions. But the great similarity about all three of them is. You know, we acquired fantastic teams led by fantastic management teams. So, you know, this isn't all one way. This isn't about Sage just going and acquiring um, businesses and sort of imposing everything from Sage on them. It's also from a, a, it's also as learning from those management teams. And I think the other key piece of data is that in all three cases, um, during our ownership, they've grown more strongly. They've acquired more customers than they did when they were independent. And so it's kind of a two-way street. We've, you know, Sage as a whole and our customers have benefited from a more comprehensive Sage business cloud. But at the same time, the people who've come into the Sage family have seen us invest and support what they were already doing and therefore accelerate the execution of their strategies. So I guess early days on the acquisition, but we've got the organic business model that's very solid, strong, and, and as we've seen for the last three years, delivers. Uh, on the guidance of you know six percent organic growth and twenty seven percent operating margins and a strong free cash flow, and then you're now telling me, which becomes quite compelling, that when we've acquired these companies, we've actually nurtured them to accelerate the level of growth from their independent base, which I think is very powerful. And what that does, obviously, coming into FY eighteen, is allow us to have um, the Sage Business Cloud, which is the most complete cloud portfolio of solutions for startups to scale ups to um, enterprises, we call it. One of the things we've done and we passionately believe in is doing business the right way. And the whole spirit of compassionate capitalism, uh, we created the Sage Foundation, which we were instrumental and I think very proud of. So uh, looking back at the last three years, um, Steve, how has Sage Foundation been instrumental? It's one of the things, there's many other things, but one of the things to really connect the hearts of our colleagues. Yeah, I think when we first um, um, said we were going to do the Sage Foundation, I think initially, you know, probably all our colleagues weren't sure whether we really meant it when we said um, that we wanted them to have five days a year volunteering, paid days volunteering to, to do what they wanted to do. I think the other thing as well is we look for our colleagues to, to make recommendations and to make proposals around areas that they would like us to support. So we have a, a system of, of giving grants. And we've seen, you know, we're now in, in this last financial year, we gave nearly two million pounds of, of grants, which is amazing. The foundation is our way of saying, no, if you wanna work here in Sage, it's a fantastic place to work, but this is how we do it. This is, we give something back, we're supportive of the communities in which we operate. Is this really resonates? You know, I think in this day and age, everybody wants to see businesses doing the right thing and contributing to their communities, not, not taking away from their communities.